Fundación Cana brings you the following article. The Endocannabinoid System To fully understand the endocannabinoid system and its role in the physiological and pathological processes of body systems, we must pay attention to the way our body is formed and what we really are. Our body is an independent entity capable of receiving certain information from the outside world through the senses and then interpreting and elaborating it in the brain to finally allow the rest of our body to interact with such data. This arrangement allows our body to meet needs such as feeding or reproduction, in addition to being aware of both its own self and the outside world. Something much more complex to understand is the fact that our body is formed by a colony of millions of cells. Each cell is independent, has its individual needs for energy sources, and has its own biochemical processes to obtain it. These cells are organized according to their function and structural diversity, thus building the different organs. Each organ plays a specific function in the human body in order to keep the whole organism alive. The organ in charge of keeping and controlling the different organs functioning, as well as processing the outside stimuli, is the brain. We could say that the endocannabinoid system is an intercellular communication system. It is basically a neurotransmission system, although it is much more than that, as it can be found in organs and body tissues other than the brain. The endocannabinoid system seems to be the enhanced version of an ancestral intercellular communication system also found in plants, the arachidonic acid system. In fact, the endocannabinoid's nature is directly related to arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is an omega-6 fatty acid that participates in the signaling processes of plants and animals. It regulates the defenses against infections and the signaling of stress in plants. It also controls animal muscle growth, platelet coupling, vasodilation, and inflammation. Picture 1 The endocannabinoid system is formed by both cannabinoid receptors and endocannabinoids that interact in the same way as a lock and its key. Cannabinoid receptors are cell membrane proteins that act as the lock of the endocannabinoids, which are endogenous ligands of lipid nature produced by the different body cells and act as perfect keys that join the receptors. This activation gives way to changes in the cells that end up in the final actions of the endocannabinoid system over the physiological body processes. The endocannabinoid system gets involved in a wide variety of physiological processes such as the modulation of the release of neurotransmitters, the regulation of the perception of pain, as well as cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, and hepatic functions. That will be explained in further detail later in this article. The name endocannabinoid system makes reference to the fact that this endogenous system is the one affected by the intake of phytocannabinoids, which act as a false key able to fit the lock of cannabinoid receptors producing a different effect than the perfect key represented by the endocannabinoids produced by the body. Cannabinoids Receptors The two main receptors that form the endocannabinoid system are the CB1 and the CB2 cannabinoids receptors. It has been accepted recently that the orphan receptor GPR55 can be considered as the third receptor for cannabinoid activity. All these receptors are transmembrane proteins capable of sending out an extracellular signal into the interior of a cell. CB1 receptors are metabotropic receptors expressed most abundantly in the brain and their distribution has been widely characterized in humans. CB1 receptors are highly expressed in the hippocampus, basal ganglia, cortex, and cerebellum. They are less expressed in the amygdala, hypothalamus, nucleus accumbens, thalamus, periapeduncular gray matter, and the spinal cord, as well as in other brain areas, mainly in the telencephalon and diencephalon. CB1 receptors are also expressed in several peripheral organs, thus they are present in adipocytes, liver, lungs, smooth muscle, gastrointestinal tracts, pancreatic beta cells, vascular endothelium, reproductive organs, immune system, sensorial peripheral nerves, 
and sympathetic nerves. Picture 2. The distribution of CB2 receptors is quite different and mainly restricted to the periphery in the immune system cells, such as microphages, neutrophils, monocytes, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, microglial cells, and brainstem neurons. There is evidence of staining with the CB2 antibody of human neurons. The presence of functional CB2 receptors is still debated. Recent evidence suggests that the CB2 receptor mediates emotional behaviors such as schizophrenia, anxiety, depression, memory, and nociception, supporting the presence of neuronal CB2 receptors or the involvement of glial cells in emotional behaviors. Endocannabinoids The endocannabinoids are long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids derived from the membrane phospholipids, specifically from the arachidonic acid. The two main endocannabinoids are anandamide and 2-arachidonoyl glycerol, or 2-AG. Once the anandamide has been synthesized in the cell membrane of the stimulated cell, it is released in the hepatic cleft, where it joins the cannabinoid receptors. After release, anandamide is transported from the synaptic cleft inside the cell through passive diffusion or by a selective transporter that can be selectively inhibited by different compounds such as AM404. However, this transporter has not yet been identified. At present, it is postulated that anandamide diffuses passively through the membrane and is then cached in the cytoplasm by the fatty acid binding protein FABP and transported to the mitochondrion where the enzyme that catabolizes anandamide FAAH is located. The most abundant endocannabinoid in the brain is 2-AG. High levels of 2-AG are found in the brain, and its concentration is about 200 times higher than anandamide. 2-AG is generated from plasma membrane phospholipids such as anandamide. The synthesis of 2-AG is mediated mainly by the phospholipase C. The 2-AG reuptake is taking place by similar mechanisms as anandamide. 2-AG degradation is mainly due to the action of monoacylglycerol lipase, or MAGL. Other endogenous cannabinoids that have been identified are the 2 arachidonyl glycerol ether, also called nolidin ether, virodamine, which has been proposed as an endogenous antagonist of CB1 receptor, and n arachidonyl dopamine, NADA, a vanilloid agonist with CB1 affinity. Two more endogenous compounds with cannabinomimetic actions, but without affinity for the cannabinoid receptors, are olelithinolamide, OEA, and palmitoylithinolamine, PEA. OEA at high concentrations can reduce food intake from a peripheral mechanism. PEA exerts anti-inflammatory actions blocked by CB2 antagonists, has anti-epileptic properties, and inhibits intestinal motility. Implications of the Endocannabinoid System The endocannabinoid system has unique characteristics differing from other neurotransmitter systems. First, the endocannabinoids act as neuromodulators that inhibit the release of other neurotransmitters such as GABA, the main inhibitor neurotransmitter, and glutamate, the main exciter neurotransmitter. The synapses are the communication between two neurons the presynaptic neuron which is the one that releases the neurotransmitters, and the postsynaptic is the one activated by the neurotransmitters. The endocannabinoids are retrogrades that are released from the postsynaptic neuron. The postsynaptic neuron, in response to a stimulus, synthesizes and releases the endocannabinoids in the synaptic cleft stimulated by the cannabinoid receptors on the presynaptic neuron, which inhibits the release of neurotransmitters. Furthermore, the endocannabinoids are not located in the synaptic vesicles, vesicles placed inside the presynaptic neuron which contains the neurotransmitters, and are synthesized on demand from the membrane phospholipids and immediately released in the synaptic cleft. Picture 1. The main endocannabinoid system's function is the regulation of body homeostasis. The endocannabinoid system plays an important role in multiple aspects of the neuronal functions, including learning and memory, emotion, addictive-like behavior, feeding and metabolism, pain, and neuroprotection.
It has also evolved in the modulation of different processes at the cardiovascular and immunological levels, among others. The distribution of the CB1 receptors in the brain correlates with the pharmacological actions of the cannabinoids. Its high density in the basal ganglia is associated with the effects of the local motor activity already mentioned. The presence of the receptor in the hippocampus and cortex are related to the effects in learning and memory and with the psychotropic and anti-epileptic properties. The low toxicity and lethality are related with the low expression of receptors in the brainstem. The endocannabinoid system interacts with multiple neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, dopamine, GABA, histamine, serotonin, glutamate, norepinephrine, prostaglandins, and opioid peptides. The interaction with these neurotransmitters is responsible for most of the pharmacological effects of cannabinoids. Both synthetic cannabinoids and phytocannabinoids act due to the interaction between the cannabinoid receptors. The location and distribution of CB1 and CB2 receptors in the immune system, the bone marrow cells, and white cells perfectly matches the cannabis immunomodulatory effects. Depending on the specific cannabinoid, dose, and pathophysiology, the endocannabinoid system has immunosuppressive or immunostimulant effects frequently known as immunomodulatory, the term that includes all the effects. The presence of CB1 and CB2 receptors in the organs involved in the intake of nutrients and energy balance, such as the liver, gastrointestinal tract, pancreas, spleen, skeletal muscle, and adipocytes, explains the therapeutic action of cannabinoids on the regulation of energy and food balance. One of the known applications of delta-9-THC and other compounds that act in the same way at a receptor level is an increase in hunger and in dietary intake in the case of anorexia produced by HIV or terminal cancer. In such cases, delta-9-THC can activate CB1 and CB2 peripheral receptors causing the fast intake of blood glucose, which is stored as fat in the adipocytes, and consequently producing an increase in the urge to eat and the amount eaten. The common sweet cravings resulting from the intake of cannabis can be explained in the same way. The opposite approach may be considered to reduce dietary intake, that is by blocking CB1 and CB2 peripheral receptors. The recently banned Remonibant, Acomplia, caused weight loss and a decrease in dietary intake. However, this cannabinoid was withdrawn from the market because it caused depression and suicidal tendencies. Picture 3 Finally, the above explanation of the fast absorption of blood glucose, together with the presence of CB1 receptors in vascular cells, explains one of the secondary effects, better known as Delta-9-THC the collapse. This is the reason why elevating the legs and applying cold water in the neck and wrists of the person concerned can help to restore blood pressure in cases of collapse. At the same time, drinking something sweet helps to restore glucose blood levels, which normally contributes to the recovery of the person affected. This article was brought to you by Fundación Cana.